G'day guys, thanks for joining me. Food, something we all need, and something we all can't always afford, particularly if you're a student or someone who doesn't have a job, if you're unemployed or if you're just down on your luck. And we need to have good food that's got high nutrition. And quite often we'll sort of go cheap because we can't afford it, and going cheap doesn't mean that you have to get crap food. It just means you've got to shop a bit further. So my daughter that used to live over in the house truck there, Dayla, she stayed with me a while now, she's a student, and when she comes and stays with me, she always leaves, she takes some either duck meat, or some eggs from my ducks, or from my chickens, some wild pork that Pace has caught wherever he's gone, or my other dogs have caught, fish that I've caught, vegetables I've grown in my garden because she doesn't have a lot of money. This video is to just go around some of the proteins that you can get that won't cost you an arm and a leg. So for a meal, all of these that I'm gonna show you are all under $5. Now I bought these at the supermarket. I don't normally buy meat at the supermarket. I bought these because they were on special and I wanted to showcase some of the things you might not have thought about. Obviously the uh, lamb shoulder chops, you generally would say, oh yeah, well, yeah, I'd eat that. But lamb is so expensive. So going for the shoulder cut, this is one that's actually the cheapest and that's under five bucks. And there's a, you could even get two out of that, like have one for your lunch and one for your dinner at night. So under five bucks, really good value. Here's one that used to be cheap when I was a kid and then suddenly people realized the value in it. And this has been reduced from $6.14 down to $4.30 as you can see. And it's, it's frozen so you can't see it very clearly. But that is the uh, shin of cattle beast. And the good thing about this is it's very high in marrow, high in all the good uh, omega-3. It's grass-fed cattle. And if you do this in a slow cooker and let it just like go really slowly for a long time and not for you pace, a lot of the collagen will come out of it and be really nice. A little bit like a cheap version of uh, probably the next best thing would be the oxtail itself because it's even higher in collagen, but a good feed. Rump steak. Okay, it's, a che it's chewier than say a bit of... Uh, prime scotch fillet but it's actually a really really cheap cut too it's got a wee bit of fat in there and you cook that with a bit of garlic bit of salt oh mate that'll be delicious and good chewing here's one that really gets missed out this is one of my favorites this is lamb's heart and there's quite a lot of it there too it's very very cheap for what you get there's a couple of meals there you cut that thin you cook it up with some mint jelly or just some pure mint out of your garden Really good chomping and chewing. It's like a, a really tender steak, and to my thinking, it's the best value bit of lamb you'll ever buy. And here's one that gets completely missed out, and one we're going to cook today. Chicken necks. Uh, generally, you'll find this in the f food for pets. Hey, Pace. He loves it. That's right. But today, we're going to cook this. Done with garlic. Oh, mate, this is just delicious. And nothing wrong. High in calcium because of the bone, and you can crunch some of that up. And also just really good and fat. A good protein source. Look at the price. Generally I make my own lard. But this is one you can buy. And you'll find this also often in the pet food department. Funny isn't it? Because it's actually for human consumption. I don't know why they put it there. But uh, this was in New World yesterday. And I bought this because I'm low on lard. And there's nothing wrong with it dripping. And it's good for you. It's not bad for you. So long as the other food that you're eating is good tucker and not rubbish. There's nothing wrong with cooking in this. A lot better for you than using vegetable oil. So I've used about 10 cents worth of this and you can hear it in the pan right now. So with a bit of fat, let's say it's about 10 cents worth, that brings our meal up to now $2.32 and two of those, two cloves of garlic. And that's probably gonna bring you up to around about three bucks for the price of those two cloves. Fresh garlic in the pan. And we're gonna put a bit of salt on top of that. Look at how many chicken necks we get for $2.20. We easily fill the pan and have two left over for two dogs. We know you'd like some, don't we? Wait for the command. Eat up. Good boy. Oh yes, you love that, don't you, Bruno? Not for you, Pace. Where you go, Pace. This is for Bruno. Eat up, boy. Oh, got me finger then. Jeez. That, that just got me just there. Ow. I bet you if you slow-mo that, you'll see the old finger getting bitten. Didn't mean to, did you, mate? Good boy. Hmm. Not too bad. I'm not going to be shy with the salt. There's plenty in there. Generally, you know, leave your pepper a bit later on so it doesn't burn. But this is all right. We've got a, 
a low temp, not a real hot pan going here. It's starting to get a little bit of colour. Been in there for about oh, six, seven minutes now. I'm fortunate that I have some land and I grow my own food on it. But I want to show you that there's also food that you can find just around where you live. I'm also fortunate that there's my house there. At right next to it, I've got native bush growing. And I don't need to go too far to find things. Some of which I planted and some of which are already here. It's a grapevine growing wild behind me there. We'll see when I moved in. And as I get down into the bush, here you'll see I've got some stinging nettle, which I've kept in a pot so it doesn't get away. Although I'm going to be growing that out. Stinging nettle is one of my favourites as far as something to make a tea out of. And it's very, very packed with everything. Research that. But here's another one of my favourites, and you probably know it well if you're in New Zealand. It's the kawakawa leaf. And as always with uh, plants we're going to eat, we're looking for the ones that have got uh, the uh, little holes and where the bugs have been eating, because those bugs know which is good. There's one there that's full of holes, so we take that. You don't need a lot. Shaped like the heart, good for the heart, as I always say. We'll take a couple of leaves. There's another one over here. Kawakawa. So we can make a really good tea out of this. It is a diuretic, so it might make you pee a bit. Uh, I don't notice that, but some people say it does. It's got a very peppery taste. We can also cook this and eat it as a as a uh, additive to our food. So I can put a little bit in with my chicken, which gives it that, ex that sort of peppery taste. Peppers it up a little bit. I want to show you New Zealand's native spinach, which I grow but also grows in the wild in places you can find. And if I go around here, and here's a tip for you, you students, you don't need a lot of space to grow food. You can see I've got a whole cabbage there, and that's one of three cabbages that were growing in this, this big box. Well, it's actually not a big box, just an old uh, poly bin, that big there, not very big. And then also I've got this spinach. This is wild spinach, or native spinach. As all spinach, this is a really high in iron. Uh, it's got all the, all the good stuff, that those green leafy vegetables that you want, potassium, magnesium, and really important to get plenty of this. It's a delicious spinach, I love it. It's quite different to your other spinach. So I'm gonna like take a few leaves off this. You may not have access to the spinach, so assuming you didn't, other things you could look for is you could look for puha. Uh, look that up online, it's, it grows wild. I want to show you something you could grow yourself if you're a student or someone who doesn't have a lot of money which will produce and produce and produce at the right time of the year. I've just started to, to seed mine now. So we'll go in the glass house and I'll show you this. And this is a plant that you just get food coming out all the time once it starts to go. It's a real cracker. And these guys, I only planted these seedlings about a week ago and they're already out of the ground. Does anybody know what that is? They are going to be courgette plants. Courgettes produce so much. This guy's already starting to get his first leaf, like real leaf. These are the first two that come up, and they are just such a prolific provider of food. Even a, even a pot as big as this one down here, you'll get food that you can eat. Just so long as you get sun and water and a little bit of uh, compost or something that you can get just to give it some plant food. You might go to the beach and pick seaweed off the beach, or you might get a little bit of chicken manure from somewhere that's broken down. It's been broken down the ground for a while, but you can get your own vegetables going very quickly. I'm adding half a kawakawa, just to give that a bit of peppery spice to it. And there's our kawakawa into that, with a bit of boiling water on top for a nice cup of tea to have with our meal. We've now got some really nice colour in our chicken necks, and the smell of the garlic's coming out, and just about ready, I would say. Look at that. Like something you might get out of a really nice uh, restaurant, but you don't because not many places serve chicken neck. This is from the stinging nettle tea I had this morning, so I'm going to put that in too. A little more salt. Right, eh? Time to eat. Not for you, Pace. Where you go, mate? This is my tucker. Where you go? Oh, where you go? Where you go? My little dog casting his eye over my tucker. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Like chicken, it's a meal you can actually eat with your hands like that. Let's keep in mind that this is something that's not sold normally for human consumption. Normally it's for pet food, although I believe there are people like me that buy it and eat it. I'm salivating thinking about eating it. Uh, the spinach that I've got, the native spinach, 
How was it? Really, really good. Because it's got the chicken fat, the bit of lard, the garlic, all those flavours have been done really nice. Now, as I've said, this is something that's not sold for human consumption for the simple reason it's full of bones. And when you chew it up, you've got to have good teeth and you've got to crunch the bones up. But I enjoy that. And the more you cook it, the more the bones break down and real crunchy. Now, bones are good for you. High in the natural calcium that we're supposed to get. Yet for some reason we don't eat this part. I've never understood that. In fact, most of the cheap food, the cheap cuts you get in the supermarket, are the ones that have the most highest nutrition, like liver, kidney, heart, necks, that's not a that's not a uh, an organ, it's a it's a body part. I'm missing teeth on the side, Chief. I can still get through it on the one tooth I've got at the back. And you've got the marrow running through it. That's actually the uh, nervous system of the neck. Mmm. And tasty as Mmm. If you're a bit uh, not into crunching it up, you could go like this. And eat the outside. Normally I'd say don't give your dogs cooked bones, but in the case of these, they're so small, it's a cooked bone, it can't splinter and do them any harm. You could eat it like that if you're fussy. And, mmm, oh, oh, that's so good. Pace come. Hey, Pace. <laughs> oh, that's good, isn't it? Mmm. If this video has been of any value or use to you, let me know by punching the thumbs up and I'll make another one for you. If not, comment below and tell me that it wasn't and uh, that you don't want to try chicken necks just so I know and I won't do any more of these videos. I'll, it's the first time I've, first one of a series of food for under five dollars that's got good protein and good nutritional value. I'm going to turn into this. Be good, can't be good, be careful. We'll see you next one. Good shopping and chewing. Mmm. Seriously. Mmm. It has that stinging nettle. That's the sting there for my tea. Delicious. Very high in iron. If you can't get this wild spinach, you can't find it, look out for puha or look out for watercress growing wild. Watercress you'll find in little streams generally. And waterways. I'm a Kiwi man I love a Kiwi like